Hey, and welcome to On The Chain. You are here with Jeff, HODL Review, and we are going to talk about Ripple, XRP, price control, and guess what? It's gonna start right now. And now, the HODL Review with Jeff on The Chain. All right, so what is it about the XRP price control by Ripple. Now, there's been a couple of theories that were floated, one by Sam I am, one by Jungle. Want to give you guys both a shout out. You guys are both awesome. Um, and you guys dug into, I know Sam I am dug in a little bit more into why uh, Ripple is actually showing that they've been buying XRP on the secondary market. Now, Sam brought up that the reason could be that they're looking to maintain price stability which could make sense, um, but I want to consider it from a slightly different perspective. Now, what if the purpose is to take XRP out of the retail market, out of the loose hands of retail holders and traders? I mean, it's something to think about. So really, this could be a potential prerequisite uh, for banks to really get started in using XRP ODL at a much higher level. Now, Jungle brought up that, in fact, uh, looking at about 20% ODL utility. Um, and so that that's interesting. There's a lot more going on that we actually see. Um, but if we look at it, it, you know, we go back to why is Ripple buying XRP? Now, if Ripple was buying XRP to manipulate price, control price, then it would be pretty obvious. I think, you know, they would actually have to buy significantly large amounts um, over a set period of time in order to balance this out. Now, that would trigger all sorts of whale alerts and potentially, probably, SEC investigations for price manipulation and price control. So, what we really need to do is look and consider a few things that if you look at large financial institutions, when they buy in and out of uh, investments they don't do it quickly they don't buy quickly they don't sell quickly in fact they will slowly engage in or out of stocks or funds so that they don't upset the market they don't want to trigger if they're buying they don't want to uh, trigger a, a, a massive sell-off or a massive buy-in that'll upset the the price dynamics so, you know, really, you know, if you research it, you'll see these increases in volumes as the big fish uh, get in. And it is one of those possible indicators to look at if you know what you're looking for. But again, they don't do it all at once. Um, and those are buy-ins and buyouts. They're not trying to manipulate or control pricing, um, but they're trying to make sure they don't trigger uh, mass uh, exodus or mass uh, enter into, into the market. Now, Ripple could be doing the same thing. But... If we, again, we want to look at this from a different perspective, that the large institutions, um, they typically have advantages in the market that are typically not available to retail investors. Now, these same institutions, financial institutions and banks, don't really want retail, the retail investor, to play in the same pond or the same ocean that they play in. So... Whereas the big financial institutions are in the ocean, the retail investors are in some small lagoon somewhere, and the big investors, the big banks, want to contain it and make it that way. Now, if these banks and financial institutions, they don't, you know, if they're trying to prevent uh, the the ent the entry of uh, of the retail, or you know, one of the things that that we've all looked at is that the retail investor is actually in before the banks and the financial institutions. Now, this all flips itself on its head a little bit because the whole concept and the whole point of Ripple with the RippleNet and using XRP and, and all of that is to uh, really streamline the ebb and flow of cross-border payments between banks and financial institutions. Now, again, if the banks and financial institutions don't play nicely with the retail investors that are already in, then is there a possibility that these same banks that Ripple 
is trying to recruit in as uh, utilizing the RippleNet solution, wanting them to use the X current solution, which they've been using, and then moving them now into the ODL. It kind of makes sense. But then what happens? Because if Ripple now is buying on the secondary market, are they selling on the secondary market? Because if they're not selling, that means they're just accumulating. They're not pushing it back out there, or they're moving. They're the they're moving retail uh, purchase. They're purchasing out of the retail. They're moving it over to exchanges. The exchanges using it for ODL. They're moving it over to potential keep it out of the hands of again the weak hands, the weak hands of the traders. Um, and again, you know, from the banking perspective, ideally maybe they don't want retail to hold XRP at all. Now, where does that put Ripple? Because if Ripple is showing on their financial statements that they're buying, are they also then showing that they're going to be selling back on the secondary market? I think it needs a little bit more investigation. Um, I think it's an interesting, you know, additional perspective on what could be happening within the XRP with Ripple. I don't know. That's my thought. Give me some ideas. Throw in some comments. Give a thumbs up. Give a thumbs down. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet. And we'll look forward to seeing you. Make sure you go check out our website, onthechain.io, all in the description below. And tune in Saturday morning, 8 a.m. on the other channel, on the live channel, for right here with a HODL review for our live stream. And then tune in Sunday evening at 8 p.m. as we do the roundtable today. Uh, this weekend's guest on the roundtable is Mark Phillips. Look forward to seeing you then. I'm out of here.